When Moses started his mission of taking his word of truth to an unjust Pharaoh, the first thing that he says is, Rabbi Shrahli Sadri wa Yassir Liya Amri. He said, expand my breast for me <laughs> and ease my task for me and give me my brother to go with me. So we need to have our brothers and our sisters to go with us in this process of expanding our breasts, cultivating soft, tender, supple, loving, firm, rooted hearts, hearts that are filled with compassion. And for that, you need a guide. You cannot do that by yourself. And that's why Shay Hamidu Bamba, who I mentioned before, Shay Ibrahim Yas, who I have not yet mentioned, these extraordinary West African scholars, Bamba, when he was 19, Sheikh Ibrahim, when he was 20, they wrote their first major teaching texts. And in each of them, it was about the etiquette of finding a guide and pursuing knowledge. Mm -hmm. So at that age and station in life, you should be focused on purifying your heart, refining your character, and sitting with various people of knowledge, male and female, until you find your guide. Because just because somebody is a real sheikh or a real sheikha doesn't mean they're your sheikh or your sheikha. <laughs> can you, can you tell me more about that? Like, how do you, like, what do you mean by that? Like, if you're from the same place, you guys have certain value, you guys look the same, why wouldn't they be for you? Because, because the, the, the souls um, from the predestination, from Alastu Barabakum, from the day of Am I Not Your Lord, that is mentioned in Surah Al Araf, in the seventh uh, chapter of the Quran. Um, when God drew out all of the progeny of the children of Adam, and he asked, um, before time itself is created, before their bodies are created, all of it, um, it's their metaphysical essence that he draws out. And he asked them, he said, am I not your Lord? And we all, all answered yes. The Prophet, وسلم, his soul was the first to speak. <laughs> he said, indeed you are, before anybody else could, could say it. So what people say about that, that day, the Prophet وسلم, said, he said, the arwah, the spirits, he said, the spirits are like legionnaires in an army. They come to know one another in this life on the basis of their previous arrangement. Wow. So, you, your spirit, your spirits once mingled. Like y'all brothers for sure knew each other before that day. <laughs> y'all, y'all brothers for sure know because y'all are like brothers. Even though you come from different families, even mm -hmm. though you come from different tribes, your spirits are connected. Your spirits are connected. Mm -hmm. So. Be, Somebody can be of the people of paradise. Somebody can be a genuine and true believer, but your spirits were not primordially intermingled. It might be an oil and water situation in this life, <laughs> even though the outcome is still good for both of you. So they can be a real shape, a real guide, a real teacher, but they not be your real guide, your real teacher. That's that you got to find the people that are connected to you. The people who your spirit, when you're with them, seems familiar. And this often takes the form of like, when you meet somebody, you're like, man, where do I know that brother? <laughs> exactly. Right? <laughs> where do I know that brother from? Yeah. And then you're like, no, we ain't met. And I'm like, really? They're like, no, we haven't met. But, but the thing is, is your spirits are recognizing one another. Because that comes from a day before time. That comes from a day before time. So, so sit with the people of knowledge. Sit with the people. The, there was a companion that asked the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and he, he was bold. Um, I, I'm forgetting which one it was, but he said, who do we sit with after you're gone? It was when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was getting older. Mm -hmm. And he was like, look, what do we do when you're not around no more? Mm -hmm. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, sit with the one who, when you're with them, um, you make thicker in abundance. In other words, they make remembrance of God easy for you. So sit with the people that make remembrance of God easy for you until you find, and then that's your guide. Um, and, that, and, and if that's a person who has excellent character, and if that is a person who has reached that state where they're living out Islam, where they, they're not just stuck on Islam and Iman, but they've actually come to worship God as though they see God, or their actions are such that, that, that they know that God is seeing them in every moment, then you know let, let them help uh, guide you uh, back to the world of the throne. That was on point just because a lot of young brothers and sisters now want to pursue knowledge. A lot of people are calling themselves a student of knowledge. Especially if you're, you're a pioneer and you still call yourself a student of knowledge. I really do of like course. that. You know, it's always, of course. Always Look, when, I'm, when I'm done learning, put, put, put me in the ground. Yeah. 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 Well, that's why we say we're practicing Muslims and not just Muslims. We're, we're, we're always in transition. For, we're always getting ready for game day. 
Game day, that's it. That's yeah. it. You got to, you know, yeah, look, what, what did we say before we started, right? Um, stay ready. If you stay ready, you ain't got to get ready. Yep, yep. But you know, that, that, that has been a problem that I see across many different cultures where the pursuit of knowledge as a young Muslim is stifled because the generations, our parents or even, you know, like older siblings or older friends or whatever, they look down on that pursuit. Um, mainly because they were stifled. And so it's just like, well, why are you, you know, you, oh, you getting real religious mm-hmm. or, or you getting real spiritual on this, <laughs> right? Um, and, and we say that, we say that often in the show, Rami, I don't know if you've seen it or not, Rami Yusuf, there's a, there's a point in, uh, there's a, uh, so season two is about him finding, he's trying to find his religiosity, right? He's trying to find his place within Islam and he takes on a shit as being his mentor. And his father is like, oh, all you talk about is your shit. Your shit says do this and you do it. Your shit says do this and you do it. And and you see that 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 struggle that he has with his father, that his father thinks, is, oh, you're you're obeying him when you obey me. But he's like, no, yeah. like I'm drawn to him and he he's teaching me and he's he's appealing to my soul to yeah. get better and get closer to Allah. Are you going to deny me that? Mm. Are you going to deny me? And I, and I think a lot of us just don't have the knowledge or the 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 know how to, as you said, find a teacher and find a way towards towards that. Yeah, and it, it, like you just hit on it, right? Because it's absolutely imperative. And the way that I teach about this in my classes on Islam in Africa for 15 years at university is the way that I teach this online. I just did a class called Shahada of the Spirit, right? Um, and the. The, the way to understand this, um, how, to, how to try to put it, how to, how to try to put it into words, um, I'll put it like this: um, even the sharpest knife cannot carve its own handle. Okay. Now, what do I mean by that? If the instrument that is broken is your nafs, is yourself, is your soul then how do you use a damaged instrument to repair itself? It can't be done. You need a guide. You need somebody that's external to you to help you along the way. (laughs) That's the the, the key part that's missing. Um, People don't understand that. They think that they're going to get there by themselves. Um, But the problem is, is that the nafs, your ego, your lower soul, your base instincts in their unreformed state will continue to um, misguide you while you think that you are guided. (laughs) You'll be in a perfect prison um, of your own uh, making until somebody who is already free gets you out. (laughs) Mm. And the prophet, peace be upon him, he modeled this for us because his relationship with Jabril, even though his station, so I saw him in the universe, was superior to that of Jibril, right? Ultimately, he goes in the the um, the Islam and Miraj, he goes to a place that Jibril can't go. Mm-hmm. He goes to the direct face to face meeting with his Lord, and Jibril says, "Hey, you gotta let me off here. Mm-hmm. I can't go up there. Like, don't let me stop. stop. <laughs> he's just an elevator attendant. Like, yeah, he's like, just like my, you go. My, wing, my wings would burn clean off if I go past this point. Mm-hmm. But but the Prophet Sallallahu Quran says of him, of him when he goes to have this vision that his gaze did not falter nor did he transgress. Mm. So he's able to look his Lord, so to speak, straight in the eye without wavering. Okay? Now, Jibril had been his teacher. Jibril is the one that brought him the Quran. Jibril is the one who quizzed him on the contents of the religion in the Hadith of Gabriel when he says, Muhammad, tell me of Islam. <laughs> it's the five pillars. Mm-hmm. Muhammad, tell me of Iman. He said, it's these six things that you must believe in. Tell me of Islam. It is to worship God as though you see him and knowing that you don't see him, that he sees you. And Jibril confirmed him in each of those. And Omar, in his narration about it, may Allah be well pleased with him, says, mm-hmm. and we were astonished that this stranger having questioned him, would then have the nerve to confirm him. Like, who does this guy think he is? Like, he, so wait, you, you're telling him what's in Islam? You're mm-hmm. saying you've answered right? But, but the reason is the Prophet Sallallahu is modeling the etiquette that a student of knowledge is supposed to have with their teacher. Jibril, even though his station in the universe is ultimately less, lesser than that of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, is nonetheless the one that brings Muhammad the word. Anybody that brings you the word of God is your teacher. Mm-hmm. 
Anybody that imprints it upon your heart, that is your teacher. And the, the roles of a guide, the roles of a guide in our authentic West African Islamic tradition are, are two, and two alone. And this comes from the great uh, Seneg- uh, Senegalese Sheikh uh, Imam Fode Drame, based in Canada now, in Vancouver for, for the last number of years. He said the, the roles of a Sheikh, the roles of a guide are only two. Return you to your fitra, okay? Your innate natural disposition, the way you were when God made you, before you added all this extra stuff <laughs> that you've been doing, okay? But you were good the way God made you. So help you return to how you were because God made you sound. So return people to their fifth hood and then help them establish their relationship with the word. Wow. That's it. Get you back to who you really are and then let the Quran speak to you. All right, and uh, action. Salam everybody. Thank y'all for watching the video. Hopefully y'all enjoyed it. Um, if y'all want to see more content just like this, make sure that you subscribe. Also, like, leave us a comment. Um, we'd love to hear from you guys. And um, more videos, more videos. Yeah, more videos. Like, like, right, 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 right in the bottom. More videos. Alright, I'll try again.